In some ways, these are dark times for human rights. But while the autocrats capture the headlines, they have spawned a powerful resistance. The excesses of autocratic rule are fueling a reaction. Now, there's no doubt that authoritarianism is on the rise, with Brazil's Bolsonaro being the latest example. He joins the ranks of people like Erdogan, Sisi, Duterte, Orban, Putin, Xi Jinping, and Trump. In this leadership void, some governments have even committed mass atrocities. Syria, against civilians in anti-government areas. Myanmar, against Rohingya Muslims. The Saudi-led coalition against Yemeni civilians. That's the bad news. But what's impressive as you look back over the past year has been the pushback. We've seen large demonstrations in Poland and Hungary. Voters ousted corrupt or autocratic rulers in Malaysia, Maldives, and Armenia. There's a new reformist prime minister in Ethiopia. U.S. midterm voters rebuked Trump's divisive policies. Now, much of this pushback occurred at the U.N. despite the fact that the large Western powers were largely absent. With the help of a number of Muslim governments, the U.N. launched a high-level investigation of Myanmar army atrocities against the Rohingya. A number of smaller European governments led the UN to continue a war crimes investigation of Yemen despite intense Saudi opposition. The leading chemical weapons agency was empowered for the first time despite Russian opposition to identify who used chemical weapons in places like Syria. A number of Latin American governments led the UN to its first ever condemnation of Maduro's repression in Venezuela. Intense European pressure on Putin led him to agree to a ceasefire in Syria's Idlib province, where three million civilians were at risk of a bloodbath. The last year shows that even in dark times, it is possible to defend human rights. Indeed, there is a responsibility to do so. That's the message of this year's Human Rights Watch World Report.